The Olympic Games are rife with corruption, and it's giving authoritarian regimes an edge. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. Before we begin, I have to warn you, YouTube is secretly unsubscribing people and might not be telling you about new episodes. So make sure you're still subscribed and check back every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday for new episodes, even if you don't get a notification. So the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, is the group that's been organizing the Olympics for more than 100 years. Even with a global pandemic, the IOC pushed the Tokyo Olympics forward after just a one-year delay, despite the majority of Japanese people opposing it. The IOC literally said nothing short of Armageddon could stop it. The IOC is also pushing for the Beijing Winter Olympics next year. And I don't think China's concentration camps will convince them to stop it. Nor is the growing international push to boycott the Beijing Olympics because of all the genocide. The Olympics' new motto is faster, higher, stronger, together. Which first feels like they're ripping off Daft Punk. And second, China's genocide isn't something we should be doing faster or stronger or together. And if you're wondering why would the International Olympic Committee be willing to work with authoritarian regimes like China, well it turns out the IOC is insanely corrupt and they've helped deliver the games into the hands of strongman dictators for a long time. Corruption in the IOC is rampant, a total lack of transparency and accountability. According to a professor at Pacific University, it is arguably the least accountable sports infrastructure in the world. Makes the North San Juan Women's Mud Wrestling Federation look squeaky clean. The director of the Global Institute for Responsible Sport Organizations says the IOC is a transnational corporation, in essence, with a twist. They are self-governing, self-regulating, and autonomous. And when has an unaccountable transnational corporation ever done anything wrong? Bribery has become pretty standard practice in the IOC. More than one country allegedly got to host the Olympics because of it, including this year's Tokyo Olympics. During an investigation on Russian doping during the 2014 Sochi Olympics, French prosecutors found evidence of bribery linked to the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. It's all connected to this guy, Lamine Diak. He was the head of the International Association of Athletics Federations. That's the largest Olympic sport federation. And he used his position for some shady stuff. First, French prosecutors alleged he and associates solicited about $4 million from athletes suspected of doping in return for hiding positive cases, and taking bribes to lock African votes supporting hosting the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo. Those bribes were made thanks to the head of the Japanese Olympic Committee, Sunekazu Takeda. Like his father before him, Takeda was also an IOC member. He authorized a $2 million payment to secure Japan's bid through a Singaporean consultant that investigators suspect acted as an intermediary to get money to Diak. That's why Takeda faced corruption charges in France, and then resigned in shame. Things went even worse for Diak, who had been taking bribes like this for years. He was sent to prison. But this is just scratching the surface of the Olympic-sized corruption at the Olympics. More after the break. Welcome back. The IOC, the International Olympic Committee, has a long history of bribery. Back when Japan was bidding for the 1998 Winter Games, the city of Nagano flooded voting IOC members with gifts, spending $22,000 per member in the quest for 62 IOC votes. Nagano officials also burned documents tracing the 1998 Olympic bid out of a courtesy for the IOC members they wined and dined. According to a key official on the Olympic Bid Committee, Nagano officials worried that if the documents were made public, it could cause unpleasantness to the IOC members. We didn't want that. Hmm, I wonder what kind of unpleasantness. Anyway, it worked. Nagano got the Olympics. 
But you know, bribes come in many forms. For the 2000 games, Sydney officials offered cash. The leader of that bid, John Coates, not only admitted this, but he's now vice president of the IOC. You could say he won a gold medal in failing up. And let's not forget Salt Lake City in 2002. The whiff of scandal permeates the 2002 games and the International Olympic Committee is scrambling to reassure everyone it is cleaning up its act. Unseemly um, things had happened, but we never had the facts. No one had the courage to say, well, here's the ledger, here's what happened. And now we do, and we can take action. The scandal began last month. Accusations that Salt Lake City had bribed some IOC members with cash, gifts, possibly even the services of prostitutes, so it could get the 2002 games. Salt Lake City, famous for skiing, Mormons, and prostitutes. In 2004, the IOC chief involved in the Salt Lake City bribery scandal was jailed for, guess what, taking bribes. Another IOC member involved in the Salt Lake City thing was also eventually kicked out over a multi-million dollar scam. The list of scandals is pretty long. For the Rio de Janeiro games in 2016, two IOC members have been charged for accepting bribes. One member of the IOC's executive board was also arrested for illegal ticket sales. Like I said, the list of scandals is pretty long. The IOC claims it's doing a lot to tackle corruption. The IOC uh, has uh, done, I think, as much as an uh, organization uh, can do to address uh, their, the uh, issue of, uh, of corruption. We have uh, all uh, rules and instruments uh, in, in place uh, to fight uh, corruption with uh, zero tolerance. And, uh, and surely you can trust a powerful, unaccountable transnational corporation to reform itself, right? But there are major problems with the Olympics, besides rampant corruption. I'll get to that after the break. Welcome back. Even before the pandemic, people were questioning whether hosting the Olympics is worth it. The IOC argues the Olympics have many benefits for host countries. It takes many different forms. The measurable, a huge injection of fresh revenue into the city through the workforce, employment, GDP and trade, and investment in tourism, with most of the money being spent in the local economy. The meaningful, sport development, community cohesion, culture and education, venues being given a new lease on life, a workforce with new levels of experience, and a city forever elevated in its brand and global profile. And then we have the unquantifiable. Health and wellness, inspiration, pride of playing host to the world's best athletes, and a city and region invested with new dreams, new optimism, and new purpose. Reality, however, is a little different. These are abandoned stadiums from around the world, fallen into disrepair, littered with debris, and rusty metal. And the Olympics are often the opposite of a cash cow. That's because the costs of hosting the Olympics typically go way over projected estimates. According to researchers at Oxford University, every Olympic since 1960 has run over budget at an average of 172%. This makes it the highest overrun on record for any type of megaproject. High costs are why Western democracies are hesitant to spend taxpayer money on the Olympics and why many have recently been withdrawing from the bidding process, like Italy, the US, even Hungary. The bidding pool for the 2024 games was so limited, the IOC awarded the only two remaining cities, Paris and LA, the 2024 and 2028 games at the same time. This is pretty embarrassing for the IOC. But the lack of competition is great for autocratic states like China, in the bidding to host the 2022 Winter Olympics, at least five potential host cities, all Western democracies, withdrew from the bidding process, leaving only the notably non-democratic cities of Beijing, China, and Almaty, Kazakhstan. The IOC is definitely cool with allowing autocrats to host the Olympics. Unlike democracies, authoritarians can mobilize money and infrastructure more easily and they don't have to worry about angry taxpayers voting them out of office. A study from Current Issues in Sports Science says keeping good working relations with authoritarian governments 
helped the IOC to secure the future of its main revenue driver, the Olympic Games, thus providing for its own future. The IOC doesn't just deal with autocrats, it acts like one too. Seeing how small the pool of bidders is getting, the IOC changed its decision-making process for host countries back in 2019. Thanks to that, the IOC gave Brisbane, Australia exclusive negotiating rights in February, leaving aside Qatar, Hungary, and Germany. And when you're allowed to run unopposed, guess who wins? Many suspect foul play, especially since the IOC's vice president, John Coates, is also head of Australia's Olympic Committee. Remember, he's the guy who offered the IOC cash back in 2000. It looks awfully like he designed the roadmap that led to Brisbane being picked. Critics describe the decision as non-transparent, without competition, without comprehensible criteria. But does this sound like a guy who's power tripping? You are going to the opening ceremony. I'm still the deputy chair of the candidature leadership group. <laughs> and so far as I understand, that um, there will be an opening and a closing ceremony in 2032, and all of you have got to get along there and understand the, um, the traditional parts of that, uh, what's involved in an opening ceremony. So no, none of you are staying behind and hiding in your rooms, all right? Yep, there's no hiding from the Olympics. It will find you no matter where you hide. So there's a lot of corruption in the Olympics. And I've only been talking about the IOC. I haven't even talked about the problems in the Olympics with things like illegal doping. Like if Russian athletes are still allowed to compete in the Olympics under the Russian Olympic Committee, is Russia's Olympic ban a farce? That's a whole nother episode. On the other hand, lots of people love the Olympics. At its best, the Olympics reminds us of the value of achievement and sportsmanship. It creates moments that bring the world together like when these two high jumpers tied for the gold medal. The Olympics itself can be a reminder of our shared humanity, that we're not so different after all. If only it could happen without a corrupt organization that works with authoritarian regimes. So what do you think? Are the Olympics worth it considering the high cost and massive corruption? Leave your comments below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.